Please don't steal my slides. Chat GPT helped me a little bit. Um, hello everyone, I'm Eric. Um, I'm here to talk about Chat GPT course and um, you know, AI in general, I would say, um, real quick. Um, yeah, I am I have a passion for technological miracles. Should we go as far as to say that this might be one? Um, I would I could argue it a little bit. Um, and not just Chat GPT, I think the um the potential here. 2020 with chat or not chat GPT three um chat GPT is like 3.5 um and also you know we have another one coming out chat or not chat GPT GPT four so like everything I talk about right here might be outdated in a month I'm sorry um so for the next one I'm gonna go over three things oh, yeah 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 um using chat, chat gpt for coding and then grinding lead code for job interviews which you know is like lead code I, for me it just really it's really boring it's not as fun as like um, working with data making graphs um but it's a necessary part of the um this whole process and i've been using chat gpt a little bit to help me with this and make it um a lot more uh, intuitive, I guess. So we're gonna move on. Um, so AI as a field has been going on since like the 40s or 50s. Um, but I have a chart here about around the year 2000. Things have started to um, climb this graph here. It really wasn't until 2012 that we had like this snowball effect that we're into now. Um, but yeah, so we had a lot going on in AI really. Um, but about three twelve, we have AlexNet, where we have convolutional neural networks. Um, so that was doing good at image recognition, which, like this convolutional neural network, is being used in like Teslas to drive the cars. It's used with the you know the square around your face to take selfies. And um, so that was twenty twelve. And that really kind of like um, got the AI researchers like you know going, and then really like the popularity started to take hold. And then twenty seventeen. Um, attention is all you need, the paper, which is the beginning of the transformer network to the right, which is pretty much the base of how ChatGPT works. Um, so it's a lot going on over there. And then to the left is the convolutional neural network. And then like, that's kind of where we are. Bring it to 20 release and rolled out. Um, the people on the wait list, I joined the wait list. I don't know if anyone else here just joined the wait list and was like really hyped up to, to get a hold of it. That happened late 2020 and then also um, two came out. So we've seen Dolly one from OpenAI before 2020. But then Dolly two was um, had a wait list. It was also, um, you know, this is a lot better at doing art. And soon after that, since there was a wait list, a lot of people were kind of upset that, you know, they had the wait. Um, so we've also got other um, options down the line. Um, so, and then also Copilot released um, early 2021, which is a lot to, which is kind of the beginning of a lot to what we're going to talk about here today because chat GPT for coders. But then um, 2022, Stable Diffusion released. And I want to note about Stable Diffusion. When it released, it took, um, it took a 3090 Ti, which is like 24 gigs of VRAM. Then they compressed it to like 15 gigs of VRAM because it's open source and then like 10 and then like this computer here, it has six gigs of VRAM and it's able to run stable diffusion because it's out there in the open in the wild, people are working on it and it's just, you know, it's getting better. And then here we are on um, late 2022 or like 2023, ChatGPT released in November. Um, and then there's other AI arts like Midjourney version four, which is just spectacular. And, um, Huh? Oh yeah, and ChatGPT um, showed like the acceleration of adoption in like five days had a million users. Well, like like 2020 when Chat when GPT three came out, there's a little bit of hype, but not nearly like it is now for ChatGPT because you know the underlying engine was there. GPT three was great. You had to like be what's called now a prompt engineer and know how to like get it to do the, the things you wanted to do. Which is still the case with all on ChatGPT, but I'd say less so because they wrapped it up in a nice um, user interface. Go to the next slide. 
So like what I like, what I like about ChatGPT is because when I do, when I learn, I go to like YouTube video to YouTube video to find like different takes on the same programming subject or any subject of anything I'm learning. ChatGPT just hit regenerate, 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 and it can keep on you know rewording it, rephrasing it for you. Um, I think that's really helpful. And with that said, though, you know it's 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 sometimes wrong, so it's not good to like blindly follow it all the time. But I would go as far as to say, like, you know, maybe sometimes humans are wrong, you know. But also, like, the acceleration of this, you know, when's it going to, like, be less wrong than a human? It's not the case now, but I wanted to put that out there. So, you know, the timeline, just a quick timeline, um, you know, 50s, 40s, the 2000s, 2012, um, it started to accelerate, and now here we are. So I wanted to go to the next point, which is working with code. So um, here are snapshots that I took. Um, so I was like, give me a basic template for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They gave me that. You can get that in VS code to um, you know, some shortcuts. Now on the right, let's see. Right. <clears throat> I'm gonna keep my eyes on this one. Um, I also, as I got into this world, like being like, interested in AI in particular. So most of my learning started off with a Jupyter notebook and like, you know, pandas, Python, data cleaning, but gave that example to the right too. And then, the, you know, there's more than those, those two things, but I think those two things like encapsulate a lot of what uh, you could start off learning. Um, so yeah, working with code. I can give an example. I have ChatGPT, thankfully it's working right now. Um, yeah, so to give an example, oh, whoops. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna say, can I have pretty much just what the screenshot did? So, cause it's like, I don't wanna to get too complicated code. This thing's in the way. To make a website. It spits out the text and this the way it's writing the text it's like the way they show programmers in movies right it's just text is coming on the screen it's just, it's going <laughs> so yeah and then it keeps the context which the other one did too and um i'm not sure if it's how far this is how many words you can have words in the context but maybe they like mess with it to keep that going i haven't hit a limit yet i don't think and then here it is it's using the code just talking to him at the top, kind of like profile. Kind of doesn't even do that. Like I'm telling you, profile. Yes, though. What you can do, and it's just kind of hard to get this to, um, you know, have the copy code. I mean, there's an accept solution, but it's like all jumbled up. It gives you a bunch of options, but it doesn't give you the explanation. Um, so this says this will create a simple website. If you begin to like things that are more complicated, it'll even give you like steps. You know, like. Well, you might need to import this in your command line, and then you need to do this and do that, and you know, just a way to keep on going. Um, it, it's I think it's it's very fascinating. Um, and then I can, you know, let me just go back to the. But yeah, so that's how you can get code, get the spit out code, quick code. You no, know, maybe you can give it an error message that you get, and then from doing that to keep it going, to keep the workflow going, it's really fascinating. Um, would try to go and deliver an error message, but you know those are those are scary. Um, so yeah, this is the next slide. It's for uh, the pandas stuff, the um, data science stuff, plotting, which I think is great. Plotting, you know, map plotting, you just have to do like PLT, 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 and then it's just so repetitive. This has made that so much better to um, work with when it comes to like making graphs and whatnot. Um, you don't even need to like copy and paste this code. It's just gonna be able to show the output of the graph right there. Like, you know, GPT-4 is around the corner. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, so that was like the coding part. And then I was gonna like showcase, I have a VS code here with Jupyter Notebook. Um, so I have Copilot. So like, 
the, the version of this before chat GPT was like this. And I had to like, um, and then using Jupyter Notebook and VS Code is kind of like niche, I think. Um, but um, can I have Titanic data and graphs? And then um, it control apostrophe, and then it like gives you this to the side. So you could, I could do that. You have all this code. And let's see what happens if I give chat GPT that same code or that same prompt. Hopefully it's working right now. Because it's many users, it's 5 million users in the first five days. They're just running up the bill. Oh, no. So it seems like not going to work now, but you can't regenerate it. Um, to keep it going. I could have been more specific probably. So that I could like stop generation, go here in Python for data science. Oops. And you just redo it. So when I get some code here. Yep. Um, so that's both the ways you can get code. You just copy code, you know, and see if it works. Probably Google it first. Maybe don't run all the code it gives you. Um, maybe that's a good practice. But you know, I, I noticed ending up using this is that like I'm reading a lot more code and documentations. Um, you know, writing big chunks of template code and then just doing like um, you know nitty gritty things here and there. And even when I get into like um, small little errors and whatnot, you know, you just feed the error into it and it tries its best to help you. Look, it's still going. Um, yeah, you stop it. Um, it's just, you know, really great. And it, it comes beyond coding too. It could be like any concept just about like physics, neuroscience, things like that. And, and it just, you know, explain things over and over again, uh, which I'll get to with the, the neat code part, the leak code. But yeah, this is, you know, this is great. So I have um, in my VS code, Copilot helping me. And then I can have in the tab, this AI helping me. And then I can have like another AI and it's just like AI is all the way down. Um, yeah. So learning through leak code and leak code. So this is um, so so leak code. Like it's so boring the way that the topics are contains duplicates, you know, things like that. And um, the way they want you, like they, the way like um, YouTubers kind of do it, you know, it's helpful, but I just think it's, um, it's hard to find the YouTuber maybe to help you explain the topic or if you like get the topic or if you just keep reading over and over again. Um, but with ChatGPT, I think in these screenshots, uh, contains duplicates. I, I put Python leak code contains duplicates and it, you know, it gives you the code, but um, you can even be like more specific. Well, what if I don't want the answer? I don't want to just copy and paste the answer. You can be like, well, don't give me the answer, but kind of guide me in the right direction. And it's, it's really like nuanced how, like, how much you can get into it. And like, it, it really seems that the skill that is going to be, um, that you're going to need to practice really is talking to the AI um, and knowing how to prompt it. Like knowing what kind of works more often than not. Um, so I think I said, explain the code from the left screenshot to the right screenshot. And it, it did that function contains, you know, everything and, a whole bunch of um, other text and then you can just hit regenerate can you, or you, you either hit regenerate or ask it to explain it differently like i have no idea what i'm doing um and then just keep going like that and then i have it um so up here is for python but it could do javascript and then like any programming language you know you want pretty much which is insane I, i've realized that like or even like libraries in python i'm not like as afraid to like go tackle new libraries because I, they can get explained to me. I get the template code from ChatGPT. I can get explanations. Um, with a lot of this said, the cutoff point for the training data of this is like 2021 or 2020. There's a cutoff point. So like, you know, code changes. So it might ha not have the right documentation, but there was this one trick that I, I think I seen on Twitter. Go to the new documentation, you copy it and you give it to ChatGPT and it can, pretty much be caught up that way. Um, and I just mind blown. What happens when this is like training in real time or you're just like, you know, um, 
stretch the internet on its own to get the new relevant data. Um, what does that world look like? How soon would that be here? I mean, it's kind of here if I just go to the documentation to do it myself. But what happens when I don't have to do it myself? Um, it's just, and I, I, I don't doubt that with GPT-4, that will be the case. Um, so that, yeah, that's kind of like quick. So this is like, so what is the future? Like, I'll have my chatbot reach out to your chatbot and then we'll let them do the negotiations. Um, who knows, or like, you know, people who make business decisions, they won't like make those decisions without like, a ch like their AI, it, it might end up that way. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's, we have GPT-4 around the corner and then we have this AI understands language. I, I just realized I forgot about like mentioning like how I got to that understanding, but it's just like a lot of data, a lot of training um, in this architecture that they came up with and it's able to do this. And a lot of people have um, boiled it down to just predicting the next word. You know, I guess that's what's all it's doing. It's just predicting the next word. But like, why why does that mean that it's able to do these like things? Say so such coherent sentences give us usable blocks of code. Um, I think that's kind of um interesting question to ponder on. Um, yeah. So I don't know how. Yeah. No, it, it's got a set memory point. So it's like cut off. It's training data was cut off at like 2021. I think it shows. No, and it'll tell you that. Yeah, so. Uh, no, it's not saying there no more. Um, but yeah, it has a cutoff point. So it won't know like if something just happened and like. Don't know everything before that. And um, it might even have like your tweets and everything in there because it's all like open data. So it might, you know, might even know something about you. Um, you know, and that's a whole bunch of other questions. Like how much does it know? Is it pretty much just like a personification or like, you know, of the internet that you could talk to or something like that? It, it's, it's really interesting. And it takes a lot of um, training time and money to get it up to date. But you know, with it accelerating, who knows when it will just like, you send a tweet, we all send a tweet or something and it just it just knows it and then like what happens when we get to that point i don't think we're at that point yet um i don't know how long we'll be until we're there i mean you can kind of um some people have messed with um just kind of it's searching for the relevant inf information so some people have already set up a pipeline it's so like you.com was another one so this is um since the chat gpt hype came up a lot of people have been making chrome extensions in um, their own search engine. So this search engine uses um, the Kiri model from OpenAI. It's not ChatGPT, but it's from Kiri, the second most expensive model that OpenAI has. And it used to be whatever you um, you Googled or you searched, it would show up like ChatGPT right here, but they stopped that. What you could do is just um, hit chat here. And they made this for coders, this u.com. I tried to use it, but you know, Google, moving away from Google is kind of hard. Um, so, Gives you a little bit of text there, and that's um, using OpenAI, but it's not ChatGPT. So, but it, it's interesting to see like how much attention this is um, garnering because like five million, million users, all these um, Chrome extensions. Actually, like what I hope for when chat when normal GPT three came out, I was like scouring YouTube trying to find everyone's take on it. Now I just can't get away from like uh, like videos on my um, my recommendation feed of like people. You know how to make a website with chat gpt you know everything and and then on my twitter it's just well, i might have like a a bubble of a twitter for ai but you know it's just like chat gpt memes and everything like, like this um yeah and, and we have um gpt4 coming out it might be that you know there's a lot of been, there's been a lot of rumors um like it's gonna have 100 trillion parameters gpt3 has 175 billion parameters so what does that mean if we go from there to there and i I thought I really think that's true, but what if it is true? What do you imagine that being able to do? Um, and it's just super exciting. Like I showed you the timeline from 2020 to now, and it's like a lot of things got quick better. Like Stable Diffusion when it came out, it's not nearly as good as Mid Journey. And then like GPT-2 compared to GPT-3, I think GPT-2 was like 2018, like 2020, it's able to like make these coherent sentences. And then we're here at ChatGPT and everyone's hyped up about GPT-4. And 
like who knows um it's 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 exciting and <clears throat> i I, know I i try my best to keep keep on top of it and i think that's what it's all about and um because uh, you know, the future um yeah but Yeah. Yeah. So there's recent news that Microsoft just put more money into OpenAI, and they already got the rights to OpenAI like a couple years ago, or maybe a year ago, because you know they showed interest. You know, in ChatGPT is running off of Azure, the Azure cloud. Um, so there's definitely, it seems like, so Google has DeepMind, which is like their AI section. And then now I think OpenAI is now uh, Microsoft's DeepMind compared to Google. And with Google, like Google had a bunch of great things come out. Like there's the Gato paper, which is like a general agent. It's able to do the um, text to image, image to text, um, predict the next word, control a robot, all with one um, neural network on a 3090 Ti. Um, so it's like a robot. You can have, technically have a robot whose brain is just a 3090 and it could do all those things. But you know, that was just um, released as a paper. There was like no demo, no open source. Um, same with Lambda. I haven't really seen um, you know, a way to, to use it myself. Um, and it seems like you know, they want to be more bureaucratic about the way they're going about it, perhaps, um, unlike OpenAI. But they might come up with something. There's like talks now of like, well, well, um, because this this u.com it uses um Bing's API with the open API, but then um Microsoft's just gonna have Bing and they're integrate open, you know, all of it in there. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, we don't hard to tell how fast these companies will move and iterate on these things, but hopefully it is fast because open AI has been fast, able to fusion has been fast, mid journey has been quick. Um yeah, and then there's a few other large language models that are out there too so it's just it's almost like um you know the race is on you know to try to implement the ai to be m the most useful you know make money um and we still have yet to see exactly how that is chat gpt is free right now um yeah i want to know right now we want to get a Copy and paste your resume. If you don't want to put your name that side, the copy and paste is literally the bastard that I want to store in the career life. Like, you know, I want to store this. Chat GPT will be the whole thing. We already did one. We already did one. Yeah. And it worked. If I was running on the same line, it's so good. I want to just. Like yeah. If you start wording, yeah, I said to give me like an outline to do this here, and it was just like a lot of text I ended up having. And, um, you know, it, it it definitely tried to help. Um, and it, it it was a little overwhelming how much it was able to help because it's like, oh, well, what do I do? This is that, and I have other people who were giving me tips and stuff. Um, you know, it it goes beyond coding. Like this is a like a that's the wrong one. So, oh yeah, I wanted to show like the, the lead code thing or knee code. So this is one, this is knee code and it leads to lead code. So like, I wanted to show like um, how to use this, like say I don't know what sliding windows are. What are sliding windows in JavaScript and Python? Can you explain? Um, and it can give you um, explanation, some code, and you know, you gotta take what it says with a grain of salt. Like, so sometimes it might like have like give you a good answer but bad reasoning. Um, you just regenerate or go and search for more information to validate what it's saying. You have to you know do due diligence and try to like you know 
scour the internet to, to um, really make sure what you're learning is, is the correct thing. But I mean, when it comes to the code, if you run the code and it does what it, you know, it does it correctly, you know, that's, that's good too. Um, so yeah, I think this is a great, a great use case. So like say it doesn't um, explain to me in a way I understand, you just go again, go again, go again. It's literally there for you until the servers are down because too many people are using it. Um, they are in talks of getting the paid version going. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what that's like. I actually can't wait because I'll I, I, I want to have it by my side as much as possible. Um, that's why I tried to in integrate um, the u.com copilot in my VS code. I have a, um, an extension called Luna where I could just like right click this and it brings it to another. Oh, it didn't work there, but yeah. Um, yeah, so then a few more. That extension is called Luna. Luna the Chrome. Yeah, Chrome Web Extension, Luna, Chat GPT for. Oh, that's GitHub Copilot. Yeah, like a lot of coders on the team say, like, it's taking them on typing. You know, you got to double check what it's giving you. You do have the Google. What it gives you, make sure what you think it is. Um, but it definitely does a lot, a lot of heavy lifting. And then the, the question is, how much better does it need to get for like you don't have to even go that forward and work the bother doing all that, you know, which is probably never recommended. But you know, we're not. Um, yeah, as, yeah. Mm -hmm. For a living, and actually cooking for as a crazy idea of some new thing to do, or you could just eat it and it's fun, and then I guess it's covered. But it does bring up some interesting challenges, I think, also surface when profiling was released, which is a lot of the training data for this type of uh, system is uh, open source data, but open source data that may be created with certain types of copyright licenses that allow you to use it. You have to like share, for example, um, whatever your creation is, is a derivative of, of that code. So I guess, I don't know if, like how, from your perspective, it would be, I guess the question is along the lines of, given people are gonna start to use this for work, there might be some legal implications when you're using this for your work, because then you may be bringing potentially a liability to your organization by using code that is open source, but that is under a license that does not permit you to use that code unless you share it over. Uh, and there's a, a lot of, I guess, nuances on open source licenses and stuff like that. So I guess, what, what's your perspective on, on that particular problem? Yeah. It, um... It's like that, and then like how they get it open, like when they did the web scraping, maybe they just did it blindly and got some like things that maybe didn't end up in the data set. Um, you know, I think that is a uh, it's a challenge for us humans to to tackle. It's um there's a lot of um uncertainty when it comes to um a lot of this because this is such a new technology, and I wonder if um like how much I'll be like it'll be caught that like. You took something that was um, you know, licensed like that, um, and actually used it. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure if I've heard of this happening yet. Of like a case that this has happened, I'll be interested to um, follow it to see where that ends up because it's like I hear a lot of the same questions about the AI art and things like that about like, um, well, what are the ethics of this? Um, and I think that's something we all should should navigate. Um, yeah, you know, um, what is it? Okay, um, so when GPT three had a a wait list, I used one called AI twenty one. Yeah, so this is a open source one. This is a company from Israel. Um, and 
you know, that's another one. That's an alternative. They have an API. Um, they have a pricing system that's similar to GPT threes. You know, we have U.com. There's Chrome extensions popping up. I think um, the million users of the ChatGPT thing. I think a lot of hype is around it. And so a lot of people are kind of eager to move forward and like. Yeah, that, that GPT-3, um, so there's GPT-3, and then GPT-3 is put off point with like 2020, and now GPT-5 is like 2021 or 2022. So they call it GPT-3.5, but it's also um, it has like a reinforcement learning aspect to it where they ask questions and have the actual humans answer the questions, and then they use that as the training data to like kind of talk humans. So it's like it's GPT-3 with some reinforcement learning, which is um, using all the library. Open AI that you can play to, you know, play video games and stuff with. So, it's, well, and with that said, it's kind of like a screening conversation with the video games that this conversation is just about too. Um, the question about giving like you updated itself. They it use that. Well, there's a character limit. Well, I don't know what I'm pointing at, but there's a character limit um, to GPT-3 content. So, like, so a million lines, I think it's like 1,000, 4,000. I'm not sure what chat GPT is. Um, um, so like a million lines of code. It, it, it depends if we can ever break this, this, this token limit of taking in the content. Okay. Well, I think it's like a limitation of like how does how does he do it, or it could be that too, and it probably can't do it. It's just be like really expensive, and you have to like run the model. Yeah. Have you been training my dog with like stuff, or where do they get data from? Well, Chat GPT three, or oh my gosh, GPT three was used on like all of the open text data. Um, yeah, GitHub, Wikipedia, eBooks, social. Social media. Yeah. And so, like, you can have a topic about any book you want, maybe like movie scripts, just, like all the stuff in there. So, if you ask you a limit, there are a million things, there are fundamentally. Yeah. I think, like, the training time, uh, I don't know if you that's right. I think, like, just two weeks to train GPT 3. It's like seven ten million dollars of electricity, like seventy thousand GPUs. Yeah, and they're like this being free every day, or, or yeah, they're just, they're like occurring a uh, occurring a bill that's like a million two million a day. So that's why they're coming out with the um page page system. Yeah, like uh, a one hundred page one hundred, um, which are like thirteen thousand dollar a piece GPUs. So I think that's what that 70,000 count is. So every GPU is like $30,000. Um, but that's just to train it. It takes a lot more energy and time to train these things and to like run inference. So like to run GPT-3, you need 350 gigs of DRAM, which is like, uh, like $11,000 11, GPU. You can bring them all together and have the code or some of the open source um, language models like from Hugging Face. Um, and you have like a brain. So that's why like I'm excited for as you mentioned Google Deep DeepMind. There's the paper called Gato. Um it can it can do the text to text, it can do the text to image, it can control a robot arm all on one neural network in one thirty ninety. And it, um I forgot how many parameters that model has, but it's like the same transformer architecture. Um so yeah, I'd be pretty insane. So hypothetically, you could have like a robot that can do the AI art generation, but also have a hand and a paintbrush and paint on a canvas. Um, so. Oh, it's like on the pixel phones, yeah. Yeah, like for example, I think the future would be if I want you to do a background, you can draw like a green color to that person and 
it would move that. Yeah. Like I noticed like uh, kind of confident in using that the the like the pixels that would have been behind them and it fills right. that in. Like any yeah. person will be considered a cool follower and they just get rid of them. Yeah. And they only have way long. Majority for where you're able to like to buy in your pictures compared to you, like your candidate. Yeah, like I that. just didn't have a person. I told her I wanted to tag in on the team and I wanted to be sunset and it made such a really nice standard. Like, I was quite shocked with the call. Like, you get put in the test. They just thought it was good. Yeah, I'm going to make the slides. I think my slides are over, actually. Um, so, yeah, um, AI is here. In here, like in the background, you know, give me a recommendation, something a search. Now it could be here where you can like partner up with it, talk to it with like you know your coding problems or like other things you're trying to learn. Um, you know, we have GPT four coming. How much better is it going to get? Is it going to be a voice layer? Is it not just going to go and be typing to it and texting to it? Could be just like casually having a conversation like this. It's like I'm not getting started. Will that be? I think that might be like. I think that might be one of the main skills is like prompting the AI, prompt engineer. Um, and how far that could take us. Um, yeah. Oh, it's not me. That was us. They are not from other teams. Um, they just want to put money to Microsoft. You know, we're money. I think they're only like 49% of it. So Microsoft owns this technology now. Um, but you know, there's AI 21, people are pumping up with like open source versions of it. It's not going to be one company. I think I think it's going to be um just like uh you know Cambridge explosion of like AI companies, AI getting better um right before our eyes. Like this stuff's happening right before our eyes. Um this only came out like in November, and then like a month or two before that, I was messing with mid-journey v4, like flabbergasted, like how good it is. Um and like I'm wondering what's next. Everyone's talking about well, like text the video or like text the whole Pixar movie. And, you know, like what happens when we get there? Um, it's gonna it's gonna affect a lot of people's jobs. Yeah. I want to train everything I know so that AI can for now for now on the job of a person who is do with a customer or a client. You know? Yeah, open AI and I think also AI 21 has it's called like fine tuning. Fine tuning is what they're calling it. And um yeah, and you have to run like the GPUs, all the GPUs are like slightly less, and they'll do that with the cloud and you just pay pay for it and you can you do that, you give it a bunch of text tailored on what you want it to be. Um, and you, you let it run, I think, maybe for an hour or something. I, um, I haven't messed with it too much, but yeah, I think I believe you should be able to do that. Um, the question is, like, how far you can make that go, how much work you have to do to get that to be useful. Um, should be two months now with ChatGPT and then GPT4 around the corner. So, you know, who knows, like, one month from now, there could be a talk on GPT4 and, like, well, it's giving the talk. So, I just wanted to get my chance to give it one of these or any ideas. Um, one company operates every multiple companies in competition and just don't have to call Meaning it's nobody can figure out what the heck's going on anymore. Nobody's concerned with what's one thing better than the other. And what's the truth? What's the source of the trade piece every day? Stuff, and that things are getting more and more confusing and keep adding 
I don't know if this is directly like going to answer your question. This is one of those cited for Gato, the one that can run on the 3090. Because um, you know, when you type to this, that all that data is going to open the eyes. Your data really talks to the machine, you know. But like I think you know, there's two two on uh, GPU slots on a motherboard. I think maybe here soon the second one will be dedicated. You know, people will get two GPUs. Second one would be your dedicated AI helping you. That's kind of what I want to happen. I think that would be really great. Yeah. Is this a Humans more random than the, the AI. We're thinking more random so the for tracks to be measured basically the randomness of the sequence of words that you're yeah. writing in a text generated by this machine, it would be very predictable what the next word would be. Then I'll give you different perplexity. Uh, I don't have the link, but maybe you can do what you find, but you can basically generate something in OpenAI and it'll give you a, a probably between 10 and 15 or 20 perplexity number. Then as you write your own paragraph, it'll probably come something like 40s, 50s, depending on the type of text that is generated. Um, I do there's like a temperature meter to make it more random yeah. in the playground or less random. Um, zero. Yeah, so if you put it to like 198, it would be more random. Put uh, zero. Uh, yeah, temperature randomness. I don't know if that like if that would break that or not. Probably not. About that, um, but you know they're making that AI detect the AI. And we'll have to make an AI that like is maybe to trick that AI and make another AI. And it's just you know, it's an adversarial network, so pretty much. Um, I think that might be the, the world we're in. Um, what we're gonna have to navigate is doing things like that because like a lot of um, with the educational systems, like well, we have like cheating students on their essays and whatnot. Well, then you can do that too. You can. You know, do do that trick and then um you know have to grade have to grade the papers now you're not doing as much work and then we 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 get down to what really matters when it comes to learning which I think is uh, a whole other topic too um instead of like uh, the, the way things are which is probably okay um you shouldn't like say that but like I think you know it's it's the case so we're gonna have to adapt or it's just we're gonna try to keep living the way we are and then it's just gonna keep piling on um. Like he said, um, yeah, I see. Um, this is an open AI. Um, so, uh, I messed with a music generator, or my friend was, uh, but no, it was pretty, pretty, it's not there yet. I'm not gonna have to Um, so maybe that's the last thing on the on the list, you know, you know. Maybe that's one of the more um, 
yeah, talk about him. Um, maybe that's maybe the music's the last area of like human skill to be matched towards this. Who knows? Um, but I do know there's like that's text music. I mean, there's like I think we were talking about like mixing and mastering. There are AI tools to do that. I forgot what the name of one was. Um, there's voice. To, there's text to voice, and you can make. There's, there's one called Uber. Uberduck.ai, where it does this, it sounds like it has a bunch of celebrities or you can bring down your own voice and it sounds just like you're just like a sentence or two of you putting your audio in. Was that the same thing that voiceangers.com is doing? Like they have all this celebrity of people and then like make it sound real voice. Um, what is it? Like it's, uh, there's the website, it's, it's like voice angels who change their voice to certain um, people. Uh, yeah, there it is. Like, this is the one I'm talking about. I don't want to do it. Sounds not working. Um, I think it's free to use. Um, and they have it to where it used to be you just signed in. Maybe I didn't um sign in, but yeah, that's the one I'm thinking about in particular. Um, what is it? Yeah, I remember how like we might have Google Duplex, which you can use now as an install on like a simple phone. And it does like the, you know, the like the little. I guess do a little bit. Yeah. Any more inquiries, questions? I think that's all your time. I think that's going to get back to the master. The rate of adoption is assembly improvement to the case over the coming years and five days. Um, you know, I think you had great questions about like how companies are going to go about doing this. I think we want to um, have a company of certain to go use this tech and go slow to another company, or do you want to use this tech and try to iterate that? Way? Um, you know, I, I'm sure some companies will choose the trade offs that come, come about. Um, so I think I'm, um, if there's no more questions, I think I'll wrap things up. So I read all this. Um, this one like help for when you're asking, but then it's over there. I'm just really squeaky. You see that one? No. I'm 
This is um, a lot of like APIs and stuff. We got there. Um, so this is a robot called Amica and it's a facial expression. And they hooked up to Kennedy's nation grid and had a call and like that. And like, this is us. Yeah. Yeah. Amica. Um, I don't know if it's like related. This is like, so like what they did is they didn't have the robot and you used the large language model as the brain or like what it. Yeah, and then use a computer vision network to make it see. Um, is this robot? Yeah. That's another thing. So there's our future robot overlord. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, you can say some of the core features here. I think that's the same range of unimaginable. I mean, I don't even want to think about it. I think the way things are going to get out of the stock about that's the people that are going to work. We'll probably do this for um, I find that very exciting. Um, yeah, I'm going to close it out. Um, thank you.